if you have one of these or one of these which is exactly the same as one of these except with a different paint job I think you will enjoy this video particularly if you follow along in fact I can almost guarantee that if you do follow along you will learn more about your grandmother than you have ever known before unless you are already a grandmother expert of course in which case you can probably give me a few tips and suggestions in this video we are going to create a krell patch now they do say that the journey is often better than the destination and i think this may well be true in this case which is why i think you will particularly enjoy the journey now if you want to know what my destination ended up sounding like it's a bit like this I'm not going to play any more of it here because well you know what it sounds like but I will play a slightly extended version towards the end of the video. So in the briefest briefest explanations I can possibly do in case you were wondering what a Krell is, the Krell were a super advanced alien civilization which became extinct hundreds of thousands of years ago. They were millions of years more advanced than humans. They're featured in a science fiction movie from 1956 called Forbidden Planet. The movie was famous for several reasons, not least of which was the fact that it used a 100% electronic music score. This was in the days before synthesizers. It was a tour de force produced by husband and wife team Louis and Bibi Barron. In the movie there is a section where they play a piece of Krell music. So this is a Barron's version of what futuristic alien music might sound like. So that's where it comes from. If you want to know what the original music sounds like, definitely worth a listen. It's only 1 minute and 45 seconds long. I shall leave a link to that in the description. So if you're wondering what a Krell patch is, I shall explain. I did make a video a few weeks ago explaining how to compose a piece of Krell music. If you want to check that out, card up there, link in description. I made a distinction between Krell music and the Krell patch. Essentially, music being something that you compose like you would compose any other tune, a Krell patch is a self-generating patch created on a modular or semi-modular system which creates music on its own. Now, to me, at least, there is a specific way in which a Krell patch works, as opposed to any other sort of generative music patch. I'll explain what's so special about it and how it works in a second. But if we take the overall genre of a generative music, we could probably subdivide that into two subcategories. One, which use notes from the Western scale, producing, well, semi-melodic pieces of music. The other, which produces just random sounds and random pitches. The Krell patch falls into the atonal category. The first reference to a Krell patch that I can find stems from 2012. It was produced by Todd Barton on the booklet Easel. I shall leave a link to some of that interesting stuff in the description as well. Well worth checking out if you're interested in it. Modular, semi-modular and generative music. Now, to me, what makes a Krell patch a Krell patch and not just a, an ordinary run-of-the-mill generative music patch comes from the way that Todd programmed his booklet Easel. So, in basic terms, what he did was to use an envelope generator with an end-of-cycle trigger. So, this means when the envelope had completed its cycle, it would send out a trigger. This trigger was used to trigger the envelope again. So, in that sense, it was a little bit like an LFO and it would just keep repeating and repeating. However, the system he used also allowed you to change the attack and decay times externally. So each time the envelope triggered, it produced notes of different durations and slightly different ADSR envelope shapes. So that, to me, in essence, is part of what makes a Krell patch a Krell patch. Notes of different lengths. Now, if you have a grandmother, you will immediately see several problems in trying to mimic this idea. The ADSR section does not have an end of cycle trigger and neither can you adjust the attack or decay sections externally. In Eurorack there will be modules which can do all this sort of stuff, but we're not talking about that, we're talking about the grandmother. So can we mimic any of these ideas on the grandmother? 
Well, I think sort of. Now, I have to say it's not the first choice for creating a Krell patch, but I think something similar to a Krell patch can be created. Now, I've made a video already. This is something I created earlier, and you will probably understand why. So I'll play that, and you can see exactly what I've done to get this sound. Now, the Krell patch output is running continuously underneath the video, although at a very low level, mainly so you can hear what I'm talking about, but also, well, because it is a Krell patch. Here's the setup I used. So this is the patch I ended up with, chuntering away in the background. I shall try to illustrate sonically some parts of the patch um i don't actually want to touch too many of the controls because so many settings seem to be dependent on so many others which is why i think you'll have a great time honestly messing about with the patches and the controls if you try to recreate or create something like this yourself so my first aim was to try to mimic the envelope behaviour and create envelopes or notes of different lengths. Now the first and obvious go-to was to plug the sample and hold into the trigger input. The sample and hold produces a series of random pitches across the whole frequency range and if they hit or exceeded the uh, voltage required to trigger the envelope, then the envelope would trigger. Now, you can try this, and I would certainly suggest you do, because it will teach you something about how sample and hold works and the envelope generator trigger works. Now, you might think this might trigger envelopes at random times, and it sort of did, but for some reason, they seem to be clustered together, so that we get trigger, 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 and then nothing for a while and then trigger 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 and the odd trigger popping in and out but it just really didn't have the, the right feel that I wanted so the next thing to do was to run it through the attenuverter and see if that could produce shall we say it better more spaced out random triggers and that seemed to work sort of a bit uh, but it didn't produce the results that I was after so I spent hours and hours messing about with these controls and just couldn't come up with anything I thought satisfactory. So my next thought was, well, if I can't get the trigger to trigger randomly, how else might I switch notes on and off? And I got the idea of using the filter. And that is what we are doing here. You may well have used the trick of feeding the sample and hold into the filter cutoff to produce different tones while you are playing a note. Now I have another video about using uh, filter tips, if you like, for the grandmother and I mentioned this in that video if you want to check it out. The card will be up there somewhere and I'll leave a link to that in the description. So using extreme values I figured I might be able to switch the cutoff so low altogether that it just cut the note out and that is part of what I am doing here. So the sample and hold is running into the attenuverter and then this is running into the mult because I want to use the sample and hold for other things as well and then from the mult into the cutoff of the filter. So straight away you need to adjust the, uh, the filter cutoff. You can play around with the resonance and you need to adjust the attenuverter. So there are at least two controls which need to be manipulated together to produce uh, a situation whereby the sample and hold will periodically switch the uh, cutoff frequency all the way down and cut out the note. However, that alone is not enough. We need pitches. So as we're talking about Krell patches and not Western music notation, we need random pitches. So again, the sample and hold is the obvious place to start looking for those. So this is why I fed the sample and hold into the mult. So I can take an output from the mult and feed it into the pitch in in oscillator one. Now you might think that using the sample and hold to generate pitches as I have done here, I've taken an output from the mult, plugged it into the pitch in on oscillator one. You might think that would produce a different pitch with each note. 
uh, but it doesn't quite. The sample and hole will continue generating pitches at the rate set by the rate here on the LFO. Even if you turn it down to low, it will still generate pitches during the production time, if you like, of the envelope which is producing the note. So the envelope is triggered and instead of getting one pitch, you get a series of random pitches. Now that may be desirable in some cases, but again, it wasn't the effect which I was after for the Krell patch. So to get around that, I have synced the LFO to the gate out from the arpeggiator and sequences section. Now, what this does is to trigger the LFO every time a new note is triggered. You need to turn down the rate on the LFO because this is still functioning to a degree, but you need to turn this all the way down. And when you do that, providing the notes are not too long, then when a new note is generated, by the uh, arpeggiator or sequencer, then that will trigger the LFO and tell the LFO to start a new wave cycle. And when it does that, the sample and hole will trigger a new sample. So, all being well, when a new note is triggered, we will get one envelope containing one note generated by the sample and hold. So far, so good, sort of. And if, if we just did that, you would get a fairly Krell-ish sort of patch. Now, one point to note here, uh, there are another couple of connections which I'll come to in a second, but one point to note is that the arpeggiator section is needed to trigger the uh, sequence. So I am using the arpeggiator here. Let's switch that off. It might take a while to calm down. But we need to switch this on to start the generation process. Now, switch the whole thing off altogether. It's simply one note. And it's playing one note. And we're, there we are. And that is just, that is standard the process. So it's doing all the generational stuff. Now, as the pitch is being taken mainly from the sample and hold, uh, this uh, pitch input is summed with uh, the uh, the pitch setting here. Uh, but the, the notes that you play on the keyboard, if you were to play any other notes, I don't think they would be taken into consideration when producing the pitches. Anyway, they certainly won't produce a normal Western uh, scale or type type of music. Uh, so that was essentially the setup. Now, I found that the, the rate control in the arpeggiator section was, even at its lowest rate, was just a little bit too fast. So I used the tap tempo function to um, modify the rate. Now, I have another video about the arpeggiator. It's called, I think, Deconstructing the Grandmother's Arpeggiator. And I explain how that works along with some other bits and pieces, some other information about using the arpeggiator. If you want to check that out, uh, card up there and link in the description. So again, these two controls uh, sort of work together in order to uh, sync the arpeggiator to the LFO. You really need to turn the LFO rate down. If you turn it up, then you will get more LFO cycles than you might want. However, I shall say a little bit more about that in a second. Now. So what would be quite cool would be for the two oscillators to play two separate music lines. Now, I'm not sure that that is possible with the grandmother set up as it is, perhaps with some external input. I shall have to think about that. But. Uh, what you can do is, of course, uh, turn up the release, which I have done on the envelope, and turn up the reverb. So the sounds will carry on and some sounds will carry on longer than others. So at times it does sound as if there are two pitches being played. Now, I just want to do 
produce more sounds, more variety. So I've added two more connections. And I have to say, to be honest, I have no idea how uh, these are affecting the sound or indeed if they are affecting it to any particular degree. But I've put them in and they are there for uh, this piece. So you can try them. You can try it with, you can try it without and see what happens. So the first one is a connection from the keyboard output and this goes into the mult so uh, this should take the pitch which is being generated by the system and feed it into uh, the uh, the mult which has got the sample and hold and uh, it, it should add more range and more variety it should do something um, I don't know I've left it in there you can take it out and see if it makes any difference because of the sort of randomness of the sound which is coming out of the system it's difficult to tell if it's having much of an effect or not and the other thing I've done and this was quite interesting and you can mess about with this in a few ways which I'll describe um, I've connected the wave output from oscillator 1 to the pitch in of oscillator 2 now I have turned down oscillator one, so all we are hearing is oscillator two. Now if we remove this, what happens? Well, we're only gonna get one note because when I set up the arpeggiator, I just press one note to start it off. And the pitch is the note that I pressed. So there are a couple of things you can do to vary the uh, pitch of oscillator two. You could also connect its pitch input uh, to the mult, as we have done with oscillator one, or you could switch on the sync function. And this is interesting because obviously what's happening now is that the pitch of oscillator two is being synced to that of oscillator one. So we don't actually need uh, another physical connection because that is done internally with the sync function. So whenever oscillator one uh, triggers a note, then oscillator two starts triggering a tone note at the same time. Now I've just plugged this in for giggles just to see what would happen. You can try leaving sync on or switching it off and seeing what happens. I actually quite like it with it off. Um, you can then detune or tune as you wish oscillator two to oscillator one. So let's bring that back in. So that is something else you can experiment with. Now, the other thing which I have been experimenting with is the, uh, well, the LFO to see if we can apply any of LFO settings to any other modules. Um, and yes, we can. You can probably turn up the rate here a little bit without affecting uh, this setting too much, but even at a slow rate, this is quite interesting. One of the things I can experiment with is uh, the pitch control. So if we turn up modulation here and this is uh, set to the, is that a sine triangle wave here? No, I just find this just a little bit too regular. If you turn it all the way up, it gets into modulation territory. Uh, you might find that interesting. It's quite a nice sound. Of course, it's best to experiment with this without all this going on so you can hear what effect this is going to have on individual lots. But that's one thing you can uh, play with. I'm going to turn that down for the moment. The other thing is uh, the pulse width modulation control. Uh, and that works in a similar way. And oscillator one uh, has been set to the pulse width. Uh, so this is going to modulate the sound there. So you can turn this up and experiment with that. 
So there's two other ways you can vary the sound. And I'll just switch that off so we're... I hate to say this is a knit patch. This is a Krell patch. It's an knit Krell patch. So the other thing you can do um, is to add a little bit of glide. And this can be quite effective. Sometimes it seems a bit over the top and other times you can hardly notice it. But yeah, just start, start off about halfway and see what happens because in the original Krell music uh, there were pitch glides up and glides down as well. So you might find that useful. Now I actually spent several days trying various ideas and different options to see how close I could get to the Krell patch design. In that sense the journey was possibly far more interesting, certainly more informative and instructional than the destination. So I hope yours is too. One other point to note, if you have patched your grandmother and switch it off, when you switch it on again it may not sound exactly the same. Some of the settings seem to reset, particularly the rate control in the LFO and possibly the rate control in the arpeggiator. So if that happens and you think, I oh, didn't create a sound like this, just twiddle the two rate controls and you should be back to normal. So as I said, this is a particular take on a generative music patch. Now, it's just what I did. It just gave me something to work towards rather than just trying to produce random music. If you create a patch which you like and record it, then please do leave a link to it in the comments. I would really like to hear it. So if you enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, and I hope you do go on the Krell generative music journey, let me know what you think of it. But if you have enjoyed this video, I have a lot more tutorials about the Moog Grandmother, which you might also find interesting. I shall let the Krell play us out now for a short period of time. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again in the next video.